Hi, I'm Kelly Moran here at the Exploration Now studios at the Inner Space Center. Today we have a special Jason Learning live event with Dr. Katie Kraftsbell and a group of students and teacher Argonauts on board the Nautilus. Jason's National Argonaut Program connects students and educators with the most exciting research experiences. This year's Argonauts on board all over the United States. What unites them is the, that they are all using the Jason Learning programs in their classrooms. Sponsored by Jason, Chevron, Congressional Schools, Boy Scouts of America, and the Baton Rouge Area Foundation, these competitively selected Argonauts boarded the Nautilus two days ago in Galveston, Texas, and will be on the ship for two more days until they reach the Cayman Islands. Before we hear from Dr. Bell and the Argonauts, I'm going to give you a quick recap of what's been going on during this exciting expedition season. The Nautilus team started off their season in the Gulf of Mexico, working with the EcoGig project, studying the effects of the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill on corals. They headed out on a leg using their multi-beam sonar equipment to make detailed maps of the seafloor, searching for methane seeps. After that, they moved on to study a shipwreck from the early 1800s, the deepest ever found in the Gulf. Near the end of that leg, they discovered two more shipwrecks, raising even more questions for archaeologists. The more recent expedition for the Nautilus used the maps they've already made to investigate new hydrocarbon seeps. These are areas where a gas bubbles up out of the seafloor. The ship is in transit out to the Mid-Cayman Rise, where they'll keep exploring for the next few weeks. Now, I'd like to welcome my co-host for the evening, Jason's own Katie Cubina. Hi there. Thank you. I see um, we have a question here. We have a number of questions from people curious about what the Argonauts are doing on their adventure. Ben from Dallas, Texas would like to know what is the best part about being on the Nautilus? Um, well, I think that the best part about being on the Nautilus, at least for me, was uh, meeting all these amazing scientists and uh, great minds that are on board the ship right now. And uh, what's even more amazing is that they're really relaxed, uh, nice, genuine, genuinely nice people who will, will just come and sit down and eat lunch with you. <laughs> and how about you, Erica? It's just amazing to see how they all work together. It's amazing to see how they all work together and, and how the ship flows. And you have these, the maritime maintenance crew working alongside the scientists and they're doing all these different studies, collecting data and analyzing it and doing all this underwater topography. And it's just amazing that it's, they're all working together. Great, I have another question here from Brett from Katy, Texas, and another similar one from Sam in Dallas, Texas. And the question is, what kind of equipment or tools do they use on the ship? Um, well, right now we're using multi-beam sonar to map the ocean floor. Um, and of course, we have all of our navigational tools running. We, <laughs> those are pretty necessary. Um, during a transit leg, uh, we're just mapping the seafloor. There are no dives with the remote operated vehicles. Great, and I've got another question here from a fifth grade student, and it is, what kind of experiences or knowledge will you take with you after this adventure? As a teacher for myself, um, the experience, I will, all the experiences that I've come to with working with other scientists, teachers, and students themselves, I'll take that back into my classroom and we'll teach um, all the, we'll take the data that we got from here and bring it back into the classroom and teach all different types of mapping and graphing with this and it'll go into the curriculum. And the Jason learning can be used in several different factions when it comes to science and social studies and geography and the engineering is amazing on here. So there's so much to learn and there's so much to bring back into the classroom to share. Yeah, um, I think one thing that I'll definitely be taking with me is that, um, well, just how, how many opportunities there are for students uh, all over the country to apply to these amazing programs and uh, see how discoveries are made firsthand. Um, so it's definitely something I can spread around and help other people get involved in programs such as this. Great, another great question from another fifth grader is, as a student Argonaut, what responsibilities do you have on the Nautilus? Uh, well, right now, uh, being on the Nautilus, I um, and we pair off into groups and we collect uh, navigation data. Um, 
also data on um, yeah, using an aeronet sensor to detect particles um, in the atmosphere. Uh, and also we are documenting our experience uh, using uh, um, camcorders and putting together videos. Great, thank you. So we've had some great questions from our, our uh, audience out there for you. Is there anything that uh, either of you would like to share about your experiences aboard the Nautilus that they haven't asked you? Um, well, just how amazing the JSON learning really is. Uh, I've been using this program for years uh, in, at my school and uh, learning from this just um, from basically uh, kids like me filled uh, on the pages of the curriculum. Um, it's just, and now I get to come out here and be one of them. Um, it's just something that's really amazing. And I'd really like to thank Jason Learning for all that they've given me over the years. Absolutely, just to, to sit alongside the scientists and researchers. And like I said, the, the just the maintenance people and the, the cooks who run the show, you know, you have these excellent curriculum that are put out by Jason Learning, and now you get to see how it is formulated and how it is put together in order to bring it back into the classroom. Great. So thanks so much, Erica and Jack. Um, boy, they were looked like they were having a neat time out there. Thank you. I've heard that they've uh, had some tough weather out there, and they look like troopers. Yeah. <laughs> the storm was pretty bad so far today, so hopefully... Uh, no one's getting too sick. <laughs> yeah, up until about uh, half an hour ago, we weren't even sure if uh, we'd have any uh, folks on camera or we'd even have a satellite signal. Exactly. It's been hit and miss all day, and I'm glad this is working out. All right. Well, I think uh, we're ready to go back to our, uh, our Argonauts. Hi, I'm Ankuz Joshi from Vienna, Virginia, and next year I'll be a rising freshman. Uh, I'm C.B. Wren. I'm a sophomore from Georgia. Um, I have a couple of great questions for you from our audience. And the first one is from Ruthie from Coeur d'Alene. It's far away. Did you get your own room or do you have to bunk with someone else? So a little bit about life aboard the Nautilus. So well, um, the Nautilus has different types of rooms. One is um, there are some with two bunk beds, some with two individual beds and some quads. And uh, the crew usually lives and the scientists live on the ship, so whichever scientists weren't coming for this leg of the journey, we um, kind of filled in their rooms and some people are sleeping in quads with um, three other scientists, but I think all the, stu the male student Argonauts, since there are four of us, each of us have um, a room, um, a room with, and we, which we share with another Argonaut. Great, thank you. And another question, and this one is from Nancy. What has surprised you most about your adventure? Uh, well, what I think surprised me most about my adventure here on the Nautilus was that um, the fact that all the people that, I mean, I, I didn't know any of these people beforehand, and now after about two or three days, I mean, they're pretty much my best friends that I've you know, ever met in my life. And I just think it's a really great experience. Great, CB, I see that you're wearing a uniform. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, this is not a uh, Jason Polo. This is a, um, a Boy Scout uniform from my home council. And, um, uh, well, really what it is, it's, it's a symbol that I am a representative from uh, the National Eagle Scout Association um, back in the United States. Thank you, CB. And uh, I know that we're all grateful that the Boy Scouts of America helped sponsor you. And um, Ankush, I know that uh, your school congressional did as well. So that's wonderful. Um, I actually have a question yeah. for CB. Um, how has being an Eagle Scout contributed to your experience? Um, well, me being an Eagle Scout, I've gone through many different leadership training exercises, and I've had to be a leader in my troop, and I've gone on all sorts of different adventures, but I've never gone on anything like this before. So, I mean, in terms of it contributing, I think it's... Um, I think it's really just adding to my long list of fun that I've had with um, great people. Great. And this one for Ankush. How many scientists are on the ship from Sasha, who's in second grade? Okay, I believe right now there are 17 crew members on board and the remainder of approximately the 45 or 47, if, um, if I have the math correct, are scientists. So this... Um, 
So the sh the crew is from Ukraine because that's where the boat um, originated from. Uh, the boat was before, and the crew just was never changed out. And um, the scientists are from all over the world. There's some from England, and then all over America. And another question here, um, also for you, Ankush. Uh, Sunny from North Carolina would like to know why did you want to join the Argonauts? Well, the Jason, um, this was the first year that my school implemented the Jason Learning Curriculum, and um, one of the th one of the um, things that Jason Learning has with the Nautilus is sending the Argonauts on the ship to explore, to s to get real work in the field, and I thought it would be something in um, which would be very helpful for me and. Um, for the other people when I go back to my school, when I go to my new school to use the experiences I've um, had and use the knowledge I've acquired to um, help basically the community and or anybody who just wants to learn about science. And I had to fill out an application process which included an essay and uh, two other paragraphs about what I did in my extra time. And I interviewed with Dr. Um, Dr. Katie Croft Bell who's on the ship and but she's not feeling well right now. But um, <laughs> and uh, I guess she decided that I had the qualifications required to become an Argonaut and would fulfill my duties on the ship and spreading the message of the c crew on the Nautilus and Jason learning once I once the journey's over. Great. You mentioned that Dr. Katie Croft Bell isn't feeling very well. We were hoping she might be part of this live event. How are you folks feeling? Let's start with CB. Um, and how are your friends feeling? Uh, well, since I hit the boat, I haven't felt seasick whatsoever. But a number of my fellow uh, Argonauts <laughs> have not been uh, not been so great. Yeah, I've been great as well. I just take uh, I just took a Dramamine before going to bed, and today the waters are pretty rough because um, on the off the Yucatan Peninsula, there's a big storm system, which is being lots of the um, energy is being sucked out while it's on land, but we got some pretty big swells, and we've just been relaxing all day, trying to eat stuff. But I haven't felt sick at all on the boat. I, I really love it. Well, I really picked the right two people to ask that question. You guys are amazing. Um, is there anything else yeah. that you'd like to share before we um, hear from some of your uh, fellow Argonauts? Well, once again, I'd like to thank the Congressional Schools of Virginia for sponsoring me and Jason Learning for really inspiring me to be on this mission and inspiring me to do things that things in science which I never thought would be possible and um, I just really want to know if anybody else out there any um, teacher student um, prospective um, college student junior in high school if you are having thoughts about applying for the Argonaut program definitely do it because it's a once in a lifetime experience and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Bill Steele and Mr. Adams from the National Eagle Scout Association for picking me to be the NISA Argonaut. And I'd like to also thank Jason Learning for just being a great inspiration in my life. I'd also like to thank my mom. <laughs> great. Well, they're doing a fantastic job out there. Um, and uh, it sounds like there's a lot of different ways you can yeah. become an Argonaut and a lot of ways that they've been involved. And I guess uh, what, what they're all doing is they're doing some great science and engineering and technology in their classrooms, and that inspired them to apply for this. And our great partnership with Dr. Ballard and Jason enabled them to be able to do this great stuff. Yeah, I'm glad they're having a fun time out there for just a couple more days. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like we have our next group, and I would like for them to start by introducing themselves and where they're from. Let's start with Ryan and then move to Dejan. How you doing? Ryan Sweat, educator Argonaut from Houston, Texas. Um, Dejan King, a student Argonaut also from Houston, Texas. Great. I've got a question here from Dina in Houston, Texas. Would you encourage other students to be Argonauts? If so, why? Oh, absolutely. Just like Ann Kush said earlier, this is this is an unbelievable experience. I mean, I had some ideals going into it but I had no idea of, of, of what it took to be out here. All the science, the technology, and engineering, and math that, that, that's going into this experience. And uh, I'll, I'll be able to draw from this for, for years to come. I mean, my, my students, 20 years down the line, w will feel the effects of me actually being on the Nautilus and uh, interacting with the crew. How about you, Dejan? 
Uh, yeah, I recommend everybody that wants to, that would like to have an experience like this. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to get on this boat, be with the scientists and the crew members and just see how everything works. It's really amazing to just watch it all happen. So I have another question from Jose from Dwayne D. Keller Middle School in Las Vegas, Nevada. What advice would you give future Argonauts or suggestions on how to prepare for this odyssey? And it is, seems to be quite an odyssey aboard the ship. Um, I would say to um, maybe get some Dramamine for seasickness because you might experience a little bit of that while you're on the boat. Um, but really just want to... Uh, have oh really like just be ready to like do different things that you normally wouldn't do and just like make the best of the experience do do i get an opportunity to answer the question yes you do yes you do all right uh my advice uh study hard uh if if you're a scientist it's in your dna i mean you you if you're a scientist, you, you found out that you love science when you were four and five years old. And if it's your passion, just, just continue on with it. The application process, uh, if you don't make it the first time, just apply again and again and again. And uh, hopefully you'll get your opportunity. And if not, you know, they say you uh, shoot for the stars and you'll hit the moon. So um, I have another question, and it's from Noah from Maine, and it says, what technology do you find the most interesting? And before you answer that, I was hoping, Ryan, you could speak to the school that you, you both you and Dejan come from, because um, I think there's an interesting connection there. Okay. Well, first off, we want to say hi to our Grantham family. Yes, Grantham, hello. Grantham Academy from Aldine. Uh, I'll have to say, in, in my engineering class at Grantham, we taught robotics but not on this level. Uh, we got a chance to, to work with Ruben Mills, who's the chief operating of officer for the uh, Hercules. And uh, we just so happened to catch him at the right time. He, was, uh, he, was, he had extracted the Hercules brain. And uh, we got a chance to, to, to look inside of it and, and, and just see how it works. And so in my course that I teach, I mean, that, that's just amazing. Just, just to see it applied in, in a real world situation I took a hundred pictures. That's great. What about what about you, Dijon? Um, I think like the, something interesting was the multi-beam sonar and how it showed like the bottom of the sea and how and all the mapping that it did. I think it was really cool how just like the sonar waves could just like show that, and it's something that you can't really see like without it. It was really cool. Well, great. Um, thanks so much. Is there anything else you'd like to share uh, with our audience about uh, your experience? I know it hasn't been all rocky waters. I think you had a day yesterday where it was uh, nice and clear. So um, anything else you'd like to share about your experience? Um, it's been great. It's been wonderful. I encourage you, and all, all the students out there, as for, and as well as the educators, uh, to, to try to become part of the Argonaut program, uh, the Jason learning, it is dynamic. If you don't have it at your school, students push for your teachers. Let them know that that you want it, and that it, it's a viable it's a viable piece of uh, curriculum. And uh, she, it, it will it will change your life. Yes, I also would like to encourage all of the student Argon all the students that want to be Argonauts to definitely apply because this is a wonderful experience and it's very life-changing. That's great. Thanks so much, Ryan and Dejan. We're so happy to have you as part of our team. And I know um, we were very fortunate to have Chevron sponsor our folks from uh, the, the school district that you're from in Houston. So that's great. So yeah, I having a good time. Yeah. So we've got, um, I think, one more, one more group that we're going to hear from that's coming up. But um, you know, it's great to see that they're all hanging tough there on the ship, and uh, I'm sure all of their family and friends are going to be really uh, happy to see them there. Absolutely. You know, this, this group is going to do some stuff on the uh, Cayman Islands when they oh, land yes. as well. <laughs> yes. So I heard some snorkeling and some hiking and some other awesome. really neat things. So uh, the adventure doesn't end with the Nautilus. <laughs> they, they get to keep doing some really cool stuff before they have to go back.
Great. So I've got, I think we've got our last group, um, and I'm hoping that they can go ahead and introduce who they are, starting with Catherine. Okay. Hi, I'm Catherine Gale, and I'm from Texas, and I'm going to be a freshman. Hi, I'm Emily Ballard. I am a rising sophomore at the Williams School in New London, Connecticut. Well, welcome. It's so great to have you. And we have um, Dr. Ballard's daughter as a special guest, so we're thrilled about that. She's been joining the Argonauts on some of their uh, adventures aboard the ship. Um, we have a, uh, a, a question from Sunny from North Carolina. and asked, uh, I'm going to ask this of Catherine. How has this journey changed your life, or has it? This journey has changed my life in many ways. Um, it was really, really interesting to see how the scientists and the crew work together. And it really taught me how um, two groups of people who have very different jobs can work towards the same goal. And the Jason Learning Curriculum has really opened my eyes to science in a new way. It shows how hands-on science can be. And it doesn't have to be just in a textbook. Great. Thank you. And um, a question for both of you. Um, Joe from Virginia would like to know, what was your best time on the ship so far? Um, my best time on the ship would probably be standing four-hour watches with a great group of people and just having so much fun and talking about stuff and always Steve commenting on his coral. And it's just been great. I think the best part for me would be standing on the starboard rail with my fellow Argonauts. We've had a lot of good conversations out there, and it's cool to have the ocean spray on your face watching the horizon. It was pretty amazing. Great. We've got another question here from Jack from Katy, Texas. And uh, the question is, have you seen any interesting forms of life? And I know the ship is transiting right now, but have you talked to any of the scientists? Have you heard about any of the interesting discoveries that they've made? And is there anything that you'd like to share? Um, let's start with Emily and then go to Catherine. Well, when we were first heading out of port, we saw a lot of dolphins. And that was really cool, just on the top. Um, but yes, the ship is in transit, so we haven't seen a lot of animals, but on the previous legs we have. And the other day we saw some flying fish off the starboard rail, so that was kind of interesting. They're a lot smaller than I thought they would be, <laughs> but it was cool to see them leap out of the water. Well, that's great. It's nice to know that you're seeing some of the stuff that's, um, closer to the surface of the water and not just all the deep sea footage we've been seeing on uh, Nautilus Live, which has been so exciting. Another question from Ramsey's from Virginia, what classes at school has prepared you for the Nautilus? That's a great question. Let's, uh, let's ask you, Catherine, and then move to Emily. Um, well, classes at school that have prepared me for the Nautilus. I would say definitely science class has. and. Any class that um, I took, like math or technology, uh, there are a lot of different skills that are used aboard the Nautilus, and they've helped me here. You need to know a lot of math to do science, and you need to know basic science to get around the ship. So yeah, those classes help a lot. I would have to say for me, uh, when we are actually doing the dives, I will be helping out with video. So definitely the clubs after school uh, with Steve Hosking and just working with him on like videos and also science class in general and pretty much every class gets you prepared for this. Thanks. I have another question. This one is specifically for Catherine from McKenna from Grapevine, Texas. What's it like to work with so many scientists like Dr. Ballard and others aboard the Nautilus? What's it like to meet all those people and stuff? It's absolutely amazing. When you first get on the ship, you're kind of starstruck seeing all of these extremely famous scientists who are so good at what they do. But then you sit down at lunch or breakfast and you have a conversation with them and you realize that they're just really good, nice people. And they also happen to be brilliant scientists. So it was really cool to see them in action 
so to speak? Great. Well, um, I think that kind of sums up the Argonaut experience. What a great opportunity to have sit and have a meal with scientists and engineers from all over the world, all together on one boat. So um, thank you so much to, to uh, Catherine and Emily for joining us and all of the other Argonauts uh, aboard the Nautilus. And um, I'm going to turn it back over to Kelly to wrap up the program. Well, that wraps up our live event, but you can continue to follow the Argonauts Adventures on the Jason Facebook page. To learn more about Jason and participate in our live events program this fall, visit us on the web at jason.org. Thanks for watching. I'm Kelly Moran. And I'm Katie Kavina. Ooh.